The Australian Outback, one of the most harshest and barren lands that the earth has to offer. And believe me, I was in the military for 10 years. I have seen them come and seen them go. When the Yanks come over for exercises, they are struggle street with our heat and our humidity. And did you know that for the past four decades, every single year we lose over 20 tourists that succumb to injuries or being lost in the Australian outback. But in today's story, we're going to be talking about a triple homicide that happened 12 kilometers outside of Mount Isa. And this case is still cold. G'day everybody, welcome back to the Gulag. My name is Ryan, you know what we do here. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the story. <laughs> Now, if you guys have watched my previous videos, you know that there is 21 unsolved murders along the Flinders Highway alone, currently. And this story takes place on that chunk of highway exactly, the Flinders Highway. Now, this happened in the early days of October in 1978, where a young couple being Karen Edwards and Tim Thompson decided they were gonna pack up their motorcycle, their BMW S100, built for long distance, and head to North Queensland, Cairns. Now, whilst planning this trip, their good friend who was a pastry chef at the age of 22, whose name was Gordon Twaddle, he decided he wanted to come along too and join them on their trip. So all three of them packed two motorcycles now with Gordon having his Suzuki 750 and they set off on the 4th of October 1978 on their way to Cairns. Now it is important to note that Karen Edwards and Tim Thompson had handcrafted a side buggy for their BMW motorcycle to carry their new Doveman puppy and take him on their road trip. Now this is very important to note because this is going to be a key bit of evidence that pops up at the end of the story. So on the 4th of November, they were on the outskirts of Mount Isa when they drove into a caravan park and checked in for the night for a good night rest before they set off to Cairns. Now they were heavily drinking and having a good time in the caravan park when a man approached them in his early 40s with a beard and a beer gut in a white and brown Land Cruiser. Now this was noted by all the people in the area and the staff as it is a caravan park and it's quite small. And if you make any ruckus or noise, it's going to be very well noted because you have residents that live super close by. So the next morning they packed up their gear and they headed on the road and that was it. No one on the Cairns end received Karen, Tim or Gordon on the other end. So they called the police immediately after five days and called in a missing person. Now at the given time, there was a string of murders happening along the Flinders Highway. So it's important to note that when you reported someone missing along this highway, the Queensland police acted immediately because they were chasing someone where they had a sketch of a man with a beard wearing a Cobra hat. Now immediately they conducted a four day search to where they came up with zero leads, zero evidence and no bodies. So the search was called off. Now fast forward 20 days, on the 24th of October, a gentleman by the name of Stan Harris was training his greyhounds in a field nearby on the outskirts of Mount Eliza when one of his greyhounds shooted off and took off into the scrub. So Stan chased him down because he knew if he didn't catch his greyhound, he wasn't gonna see him again. So he raced off into the scrub when he noticed a foul stench coming from his right direction. And that's exactly the direction where his dog took off. So he followed the smell and that's when he found Tim Thompson's body sitting up against the tree, completely stripped of all clothing and belonging with a gunshot wound execution style in his head. Now, immediately Stan called the police and the police came straight out and identified that this was Tim Thompson and immediately they conducted a search in the surrounding area. And that's when they found the other two bodies in the exact same manner that Tim Thompson was found, but just on different trees. Now, as soon as this happened, it conducted and sparked a knee-jerk reaction to start another search to find some evidence leading 
to the killer. Because all three bodies had been sitting in the blistering heat, bloating, having flies on them, and ants and meat ants, and wild animals having a go at the bodies, which was destructive to any evidence that the police were going to be able to gather. And amongst their search, the only thing they came up with was unfortunately the deceased dog was found in the Mount Isa dump in the surrounding area with some of their belongings. But once again, no evidence, so it went back cold. Now fast forward all the way to April 2019. The police, as they often do, got into the X-Files, pulled out a folder, blew the dust off it, and reopened this case. They advertised it on social media, they put the word out on news and a newspaper, and not before long, within one week, they had 50 new leads. That was new information and new evidence to them. And all the new information and evidence led to one singular bloke, Bruce John Preston. But the problem was, Brucey boy was now 64 years old, super senile and full of dementia. So he was absolutely useless in the interrogation. But it was found out that he was in the exact area traveling Australia in 1978. Not only that, when they went through Bruce's shed, they dug out a motorcycle, the exact same brand and the exact same model as the BMW S100. But he went to an extensive effort to scratch out the VIN number and change small parts and give it a fresh coat of paint to cover it up. Now immediately they knew this was the bike and once again, when they pressed him for any more interrogation, he was simply just too old and did not know what was going on. Now he was traveling Australia, but he was traveling on a motorbike. So what about the four wheel drive? Well, amongst a little bit further digging, the police also found that Bruce's father owned the exact white and brown four wheel drive. But with no confession, and no hard evidence, there's no case. So Bruce has been left alone by the police. And this case, to this day, is still cold and unsolved.